Hi, I'm Kep Kepner, CPA here in Dallas. Let's talk a little bit about uh, getting rid of some of your stocks and bonds and investments. Uh, now's the time towards the end of the year to look at that. As a practical matter, you really ought to be looking at it every month. Why do I still have that dog of a stock? Okay, I convinced me that Dell Computer was going to be a great investment all the way from $56 down to the 20s, okay, because I just quietly wrote it down. What a mistake, okay, I could have sold it a number of times. If I'd have wanted to be sophisticated, I could have done uh, puts and calls, margin, all kinds of margin calls, I could have sold calls on the stock. All of those things are strategies to limit your losses and make some profit. but. Let's say that you've got that dog. Should you sell it? Well, you've got to decide what else you would do with the money, okay? If you sell more stock that have losses than gains in the current year, then as an individual, you can write off 3,000 more of those losses. So let's say you had gains of $10,000 and losses of $20,000. Well, in the current year, you could write off 13,000 of the losses. 10 would be offset by the gains that you had, but then you could write off the other 3,000. Well, what happens to the other 7,000 of losses? Well, that gets carried forward to next year, and you can write off 3,000. And next year, you can write off 1,000. So you would have used it up in a period of four years. So what you need to do is you need to look at these and decide, well, okay, I really want to sell off some of these. If I've got a lot of gains and I've got some losses, well, I might want to sell some of my stocks with losses so I don't have to pay tax on the gains. That's a great strategy. You do have to be careful about what's called a wash sale. That's where you sell a stock today and you take a loss and then you buy it back within 30 days. If you do, the loss doesn't count. So you do have the ability to manage this and look at it and make sure you don't incur a, lot, a uh, wash sale. Now, if you want to sell stocks, you can do it at different times. You can sell stock in Exxon, but buy stock the next day or the same day in another oil and gas company. So you're staying within the same industry and taking your loss. So that's a strategy that's taken. You can decide over time to sell stocks off on a ladder or invest on a ladder. That means taking the total amount you want to get rid of and selling it in equal amounts over a certain number of months or even years. That's another strategy. Now don't forget that there is zero capital gain if you're in the low tax bracket. If you're single and your income, your taxable income is around 36000 or you're married and it's around 74000 then you can sell and have capital gains that are not taxable. So if you fall in those brackets, you, you ought to be looking for that opportunity. Let me take the gain now. I can decide when to invest it and in what, but I'm not going to pay any tax on that gain. So there are lots of considerations, but you have to do it before the end of the year. You know, if you go to your CPA or you were to come to me and say, okay, well, you know, uh, last year I had all these capital gains, and I say, well, did you have any capital losses? Well, no, but I got these real dogs. Well, why didn't you sell them last year when you could offset some of your gains? Well, uh, whatever reason, okay? The reality is you can't do it after the fact. The reality is you got to do it before the end of the year. So if this applies to you, you better get cracking on it. Now, let's say that you have a rent house and you decide it's time to sell it. You've owned it for a long time and you have a capital gain on the sale of your rent house and you're going to have to pay tax on it. Well, why not sell some of your stocks that have capital losses and offset the capital gain on the sale of your real estate? 
They're both capital gains. So as a tax strategy, you should always be looking at your investments. Generally, they're the bigger dollar amounts to hit your tax return. Other than maybe your maybe your W-2, or certainly if you have a business, I would hope that your capital gains and losses are smaller than your business profit. But even in the small business case, your capital gains are generally large. So, oh, I forgot to tell you, there's another problem with Obamacare. I had a client who estimated her earnings really low. She went to the marketplace, paid a low price for her health care, but then during the year a partnership that she was in ended up with the sale of a bunch of real estate and she all of a sudden had 60000 of additional income that showed up on her tax return. What that did was it made her non-compliant with Obamacare. They came back and charged her the premiums that she hadn't paid because she said that she was going to be a low income earner. And they penalized her 20% for severely underestimating her tax liability. So that is the world we live in. That's just the latest wrinkle in a long string of wrinkles from the administration telling us what they're going to charge us in the way of tax. So you have to be as smart as them through yourself and your advisors to make sure you're making good decisions before year end. If you need help in that area, we can help you. Give us a call, please. Thanks.